Meanwhile, back to the, our other story here. Cincinnati had, of course, deep ties to the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and his activism. So when King was assassinated five decades ago, the Queen City well, felt the sting more than most. Nine on your side's Tom McKee is live right now with reflections of a father and son who considered King a mentor. Tom? Well, the Freedom Center is going to be remembering Dr. King tonight, and for good reason. It was in Cincinnati where he got his denominational home and his national pulpit for his views. Now, that is when the Reverend L.V. Booth created the Progressive National Baptist Convention at Zion Baptist Church in Avondale. Dr. King joined that movement just a couple of years later, and the rest is history. Paul Booth and son Martin poured over memories of Dr. Martin Luther King on Wednesday. They came from King's numerous visits to Zion Baptist Church, led by the Reverend L.V. Booth, Paul's father and Martin's grandfather. Martin is named for him. His greatness did not bother him. He was, he, he was a person of, a, of a humility and he had a real human touch, just, just very down to earth. Dr. King was one of the most thought-provoking leaders of our time and just to be able to just be a, his name bearer um, is just is something to, you know, to look up to um, as a mentor. The Cincinnati trips came after Reverend Booth founded the Progressive National Baptist Convention. King joined after leaving the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated when that group opposed civil rights. Paul Booth was 10 when he first met Dr. King and even got him to sign one of his books. He took time just to talk to me for a few minutes. I don't, I'm not sure what the conversation was, but when it came for him to uh, sign the autograph, he was very willing to sign the autograph that I have that I've kept across the years. Booth clearly recalls the emotions of the day King was shot. I could see it on the faces of people on TV. Uh, I could see it in my parents and my uh, mother and father. That sparked a life of public service on Cincinnati City Council, the Human Relations Commission, and heading the local NAACP chapter. The Booth family's commitment to service and the principles of Dr. Martin Luther King continues from generation to generation to generation. And I think that's ultimately inspired me to get involved into my community, to become a leader, to try to add, um, um, to give people voices who can't speak for themselves. So that's what I've tried to do in my daily life. Well, back here live at the Freedom Center, I'm joined by my colleague Kristen Sully. And Kristen, basically another person deeply involved in the civil rights movement with Dr. King was the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. He got his start in Alabama, Birmingham to be exact. And then, of course, when he had some problems down there, he invited Dr. King in to help speak. Shuttlesworth ended up coming to Cincinnati and his legacy is just as strong as Dr. King's. In fact, both of them along with the Ralph, Reverend Ralph Abernathy are known as the big three of civil rights. Now, you had a chance to talk today to some young people who are carrying on the next generation and the next generation of Dr. King. What do they have to say? Absolutely, and that history you were talking about, Tom, so important, but we did want to ask, you know, on the 50th anniversary of King's death, the big questions really are how far we come and how far do we still have to go? And we spoke to several elementary schoolers at a school in Covington earlier this afternoon, and they tell us they've been learning about Dr. King's legacy over the past couple of months, especially with the Black History Month just this past February. Um, they've been learning about his I Have a Dream speech. They've been learning about segregation, particularly in schools and King's nonviolent approach to activism. Now they tell us it's time to apply the lessons he taught to their lives. Here's what fifth grader Wanasia Ellis had to say about keeping King's legacy alive. I think I want to continue his dream by keeping it unsegregated and even ending this whole blacks versus white thing completely and just making it to where everybody can be together and there will be no conversation even coming up about the color of our skin. Asia certainly has the right idea. Now we'll have plenty of other interviews with many more of those kids coming up in our later newscast. But for now, reporting live at the Freedom Center this evening, Kristen Swilly, 9 on your side.